I mean, there are many chemicals that, that can affect us, but uh, none that I've seen in 45 years like glyphosate. Can you explain briefly again, how does glyphosate weaken the immune system exactly? Glyphosate uh, weakens the immune system by destroying our gut bacteria, destroying the balance of our bacteria necessary to make aromatic amino acids, uh, which are tyrosine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan, as well as the uh, amino acid methionine, which is our sulfur-producing amino acid. Additionally, glyphosate disrupts our detox system. That's the cytochrome P450 enzymes. It's a major class of enzymes that detox uh, the xenobiotic chemicals that we're exposed to on a daily basis, the air pollution that we breathe, the stuff we put on our skin, other other chemicals and residues that might be in our food, heavy metals and metalloids uh, that uh, food uh, absorbs and that we ingest, even uh, aluminum adjuvants that are in vaccine. Um, our ability to detoxify these substances is greatly inhibited by the presence of glyphosate in our food supply. So as mothers concerned about our children's health, our number one concern should be whether or not the gut bacteria is balanced. This is, this is true. Something we've never needed to be concerned about before. In our alimentary tract or in our gut, in our digestive tract, yes. bacteria form a, a protective layer between the food that's passing through that they're digesting along with enzymes and our cell walls. There's a protective layer of bacteria. And so when we go depleting, now we have places where there are holes that have developed mm -hmm. where uh, these things are moving directly into our bloodstream. Right. So and yeah. so and not only we have, have proteins circulating yeah. that shouldn't be there. Food and toxins. And toxins. Yeah. And this is important because when we don't have the correct bacteria in our stomach to produce the IGF is what you called about it for the neurons. IGF one. This this can affect our children's um, not only their health but their behavior and their learning abilities. Right. Yeah. Um, some of the uh, biomarkers for autism: methionine deficiency, serotonin and melatonin deficiency, uh, defective uh, aromatase, which is a C CYP enzyme, and impaired immune function, uh, disrupted gut bacteria, inflammatory uh, uh, bowel low serum sulfate, chronic low-grade inflammation in the brain, uh, low vitamin D levels. Most chronic diseases are related to low levels of vitamin D. Uh, and also our B vitamins, B6, B9, B12, high serum nitrate and ammonia. And these are all caused by glyphosate. Every, every one of these can be linked to glyphosate. B12 is a very, very crucial vitamin. That's cobalamin. There's a cascade of diseases that are implicated with cobalamin deficiency. Cobalamin is built around the element cobalt, and cobalt is chelated by glyphosate. It's one of the many elements that are chelated by glyphosate, from calcium, magnesium, all the way down to molybdenum, uh, including sulfur are affected by glyphosate. Glyphosate ties these elements up so that they're unavailable to our biology. Mm -hmm. And uh, these elements are necessary for biological processes. So it's very plausible that these unbelievable increases in autism are directly related to the enhanced effects of glyphosate on our biology. Yeah. allowing other xenobiotics to have full reign with us, yeah. leaving us defenseless. Getting back to, um, to serotonin, serotonin affects ghrelin and amylin. These are gut-derived hormones in our uh, alimentary tract. The significance of ghrelin and amylin, amylin promotes satiety. It controls our glycemic regulation. It makes us feel full. By impairing serotonin, um, our ghrelin uh, increases and our amylin decreases. And when that happens, we don't feel full. Our stomach contents empty more rapidly. And so we eat. And we eat to feel full. And we don't feel satisfied. 
So this is another effect of our serotonin levels being depleted. And could account for, is it about 40% of Americans now that are obese? Uh, and growing. Yeah. And growing. Serotonin is also necessary for, uh, for liver uh, to be repaired. And we know from other studies of glyphosate, uh, we've seen that glyphosate destroys the liver. It causes damage to liver cells. Well, it causes damage to liver cells because of serotonin. Serotonin is what stimulates cell growth and liver repair. Serotonin is also um, essential for the production of melatonin. Um, melatonin is produced in the uh, pineal gland or the pineal gland. It's a neurohormone that uh, controls biological function like our circadian uh, rhythm. Um, our internal clock, our sleep-wake cycle. So the diseases uh, and conditions that we're seeing today with, with uh, people not being able to sleep, they're on Ambien, they're stressed out, this is directly related to lack of serotonin mm -hmm. because if you don't have enough serotonin, the pineal gland can't produce melatonin, which is the hormone that regulates uh, those functions. Melatonin Receptors are uh, important mechanisms uh, of learning and memory. Without uh, effective amounts of melatonin, our learning and memory is impaired. So this, this is another, uh, another effect. Melatonin controls mood and it also controls depression, seasonal affective disorder, and bipolar disorder. Which, yeah, which is something which is very prevalent in America and not other countries. Um, American children, especially teens, are highly drug, like severely drugged compared to other countries. Yes. It, I mean, it's not even it's not even an issue in some other countries. We had an exchange student from Hong Kong. She'd never heard of kids taking medication for bipolar and things like that. And here, it's it's quite it's quite popular amongst high school students. Neurological dis uh, disorders in general can be directly linked to glyphosate. As we've discussed, uh, it disrupts serotonin, mm. which in turn disrupts the production of melatonin, and those are neurological transmitters. Yeah, and they show up as, as behavioral problems That's with right. kids. That's right. Learning behavioral problems, aggression, right. uh, depression, moodiness. Right, and it's directly related to a lack of melatonin which is related to serotonin, which is related to the aromatic amino acid tryptophan that our bacteria make. It's all connected. And that our bacteria are not making because they're, they're being killed off by glyphosate. by glyphosate. Which is on 160 varieties, you said, of our food crops. Yes, there are some 160 varieties um, of food in the U.S. that glyphosate is used on. It's not just used on corn, soy, canola, cottonseed oil, sugar beets, but it's also used on like sugar cane. It's used on wheat. It's used on dried peas, dried beans. It's used in orchards around trees and absorbed into the fruit like apples peaches, pears, nectarines, almonds. bananas, almonds, all of these foods contain residues of glyphosate, it's including uh, forages uh, and food for our livestock, for pigs, cattle, sheep, goats, anywhere from 20 parts per million up to 400 parts per million. Okay, and why this is important is because one of the studies in Europe showed that 0.1 parts per million is what was toxic in animals. Glyphosate is even more toxic than that. It only takes molecules of glyphosate to do damage. Or molecules what? are less than parts per trillion. Less than parts per trillion. And a recent study showed that glyphosate in the parts per trillion range induced breast cancer. Um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Environmental Protection Agency, they've only tested soy. Um, they 
should be testing for some 160 and counting crops that uh, glyphosate is used on. And we should say that soy formula is made up of 46 to 64 percent GMO soy. And so babies are being exposed to glyphosate. Right from birth. Right from birth. It never should have been introduced into industrial agriculture. Uh, herbicides in general should never have been introduced because they knew when they were patenting, patenting these products that they killed bacteria. However, back then, they didn't understand the role of bacteria in the immune system. In our immune system. Right. Yeah. Uh, but today, that's a different story. We know now. We know now. And we know this is it. I mean, this is this is the major cause for chronic disease. Chronic disease in America. Yeah.